Um, and one nice thing about calculating internal loads in structures is that I didn't talk about how to do it with distributed loads. So once you get to the internal loads problem, it's easy. It only has point loads. You know, so that's, that's the good news when you see one. That's the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, but you just have to use that rotation matrix thing. And by the way, uh, you can do, you can use rotation matrices to adjust distributed loads, put them in a different coordinate system. It's not really that hard. It's just like it takes time and we got to stop somewhere and move on to the next thing. But uh, if anyone is curious or whatever, you know, I'd be happy to show you how to do that. It would, it would only take 20 minutes or something, but uh, mastering it take, you know, takes doing problems and stuff and you have enough problems. You have 99 problems, but uh, rotation matrices with distributed loads ain't one. <laughs> yeah. um. <laughs> so, okay, here's an example. Oh, here's an example. Okay, so we have a cantilever beam. I still can't get over how funny that must have been with Tully. Um, there's nothing funnier than making people feel bad about caring about human life, the value of human life. Yeah. Did you hear about all those puppies? They're all dead now. Just kidding. Hilarious. Um, OK, so that's a cable. And then a 30 degree angle. Uh, and we have a 1,000 Newton force like this. Uh, this length is one meter. This length is half a meter. Okay. And uh, we're going to calculate the internal loads in both of these two members. And uh, we're going to use that as a way to sort of analyze um, where in these members we are concerned about the thing breaking. Yep. Uh, yeah, this is a cable, the vertical thing. So the first thing we have to do is solve the structure. And um, this one isn't a truss. So if you took statics from someone besides me, you have to use the method of frames for this. Um, if you took it from me, you do it the same way you do every problem. Uh, so, oh, let's number these. So I'll call this member one and this member two. Uh, well, you can get it from the, it's one plus 0.5 times the length. One point. Four three three. Um, so free body diagram of member one. And we're neglecting the weight on these. Uh, so at the wall, that's a fixed joint. So we have a force vector RA and a couple MA. And then here we have a cable tension, T, and a force vector here, uh, the force on one by two. Um, and I'll write this out, even though this is horizontal and that makes it sort of easy to, to just kind of 
use that other way of calculating moments and stuff. Um, okay, so I'll put the about point here. And then the row vector for R is zero. The fourth is Rx, Ry. Moment is zero. And then uh, the tension, the row vector is one, zero. Uh, the force vector is zero, negative t. The moment is negative t. And then uh, for the row vector for F12, uh, so that's the one that's, the length is 1 plus 0.5 cosine of 30. Cosine of 30 is 0 0.866. 0 0.5 times that is 0 0.433. So I'm pretty sure this is 1.433. Zero. Uh, the force vector is F12, X and Y. One point four three three F one two Y. So Newton's second law. Well, I'm I'm going to just write these out. What? I did forget the couple. Thank you. So the couple we'll just put on as M A. And so equation one, that's the x equation of Newton's second law, says rx plus f12x is equal to zero. Equation two is the y equation from Newton's second law, so ry minus t plus f12y equals zero. And the third is rotational equation, so we have minus t plus 1.433 F12Y plus MA is equal to zero. Now we'll go to the second body. Um, so we have the cable tension down here. That's the same one because it's the same cable. Here we have the force on two by one. I'll call that negative F12 since we already defined F12. And then we have a 1000 Newton force that way. I'm putting it this direction just uh, for, so the picture doesn't look jumbled. Uh, so 1000 Newtons. Um, I'll put the about point here. So the row vector for F12 is zero. Force vector is negative F12x, negative F12y, cross product zero. Um, the row vector for T is, uh, well, that's 0.5 because the length of that the distance from the center to where t is applied is 0.5, and then times cosine and sine of 225. Um, just that is negative cosine of 45, negative sine of 45. I forgot. To, oh, yeah, 30. 210. So what is that? Negative point. Four three three negative point five uh, point five. Uh, no, just the x coordinate's going to matter. 
uh, f is 0 t. So the cross product is negative 0.433 t. And then the 1,000 Newton force, the row vector is positive 0.433, positive 0.25. Force is negative 1,000, 0. Um, and so that is positive 250. And so equation 4 is the x component of Newton's second law that says negative F12x. Plus zero minus one thousand is equal to zero. So f one two negative f one two x is equal to positive one thousand. What? So you add them all up, set them equal to zero, and then I move the constant over the other side later. Okay. Uh, okay, and then equation 5 says negative F12Y plus T is equal to 0. And the 6th equation says negative 0.433T plus 250 is equal to 0. So negative 0.433T is equal to negative 250. Did you take the garlic out of your bag? <laughs> you did right. <laughs> That's funny. I thought Stephanie was going to have to leave this morning. <laughs> I killed the thing with Tony today. <laughs> um, okay, so we got six equations, six unknowns. And did I ever solve this? No. So let's solve it. Okay, so the equations, one, two, three, four, five, six. And the variables are f12, x, f12, y, um, and r, x, r, y, and t, and m, r, or m, a, I guess I call it. And then this is a constant. So equation one says one Rx plus one F one two X is equal to zero. Everything I don't fill in is a zero. Equation two says one Ry plus one F one two Y minus T is equal to zero. So one, one, minus one, zero. Uh, equation 3, minus t plus 1.433 f12y plus ma is equal to 0. 1.433 minus t plus ma is equal to 0. And then equation 4 says f12x, negative 1 of those, is equal to 1,000. Uh, equation 5 says F12Y, negative 1 of those, plus 1T is equal to 0. And then equation 6 says T's negative 0.433 is equal to negative 250. 
if you ever fill out your matrix and you don't have everything is zero in the constants, it's not gonna it's not gonna work because the solution is just no forces. Um, uh, let's see. Can someone solve that? Now I'm gonna put these in. Let's do them one by one. Well, the horizontal one. We don't have to use a rotation matrix because the coordinate system is already aligned the way we want it. So for that one, we have um, a horizontal reaction of 1,000, a couple at the wall of negative 250. A downward force from the cable of 577.37. Uh, and then F12 is thousand. Uh, 577.37. Uh, something is not right there. Oh, negative 1,000. Okay, no distributed loads. So the only places where those sub-functions can change is the endpoints and where this point force acts. So n equals three, and that means we need two cuts. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of things. I mean, I just think you just have to do a bunch of problems, you know, and then eventually, yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, so cut one is valid for all x's between zero and one. Yes. Uh, so we have a force here of a thousand, a couple of two fifty. And then we haven't made it to the 577 yet. So all we have left are T, V, M. There's no torques in this problem, so I'm just going to leave the, uh, the torque out of there. So Newton's second law says 1,000, 0, plus T negative V is equal to zeros. So T is equal to negative 1,000, and V is equal to zero. So is that intention or compression? Compression, yep. Positive is tension, negative is compression. Yeah, just nothing's applying uh, moments about the x-axis, so there's not going to be any internal force. Yeah, everything would just come out zero. You just end up in every, in every cut just say, having an equation that says torque equals zero. Um, and then uh, the moment equation... This is about the z-axis. Says negative two fifty plus m minus v x is equal to zero. So m is equal to two fifty plus v x, you know, which is zero x, and so m is equal to positive two fifty.
and uh, we can check the derivatives. Um, in these, they're all sort of, uh, in the ones where you don't have any distributed loads, it's, it's all pretty simple. Um, the moments, uh, well, in this case, dm dx is just equal to zero, which is v. Um, dv dx is zero, which is q, because there's no distributed load. Uh, M, so it's, you have to be a little careful with this thing. Um, uh, so say, um, okay, so let's say M is equal to zero. What's Vm dx? Well, that depends on whether this is saying that the function of m, m is a function of x is equal to zero, or whether you're just saying m is equal to zero at some value of x. Right? Um, so if this is if this is the function, then Vm dx is equal to zero everywhere. If this is if it just says m crosses through, you know, like M could look like this, and so it's zero here. But the M the X here is not equal to zero. Okay. So, anyways, do you understand the connection I'm trying to make here? Uh, that comes up a lot with differential equations and stuff. You have to be real clear to yourself: Are you talking about a single value of the function, or are you talking about the whole function? You know. I don't know if that had anything to do with what you asked me, actually, but uh, I thought I'd say that. I'd stop listening. But um, I was saying M can't be zero. M can't be zero. M can't. The function M can't be zero unless the function Z B is zero. I guess there could be offsetting ones. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, remember this, anyways. Remember that I told you this. Um, yeah, cut two. Uh, this is valid for x's between 1 and 1.433. Um, so we still have the 1,000 Newton force this way. We still have the couple of negative 250. And now... We also have the cable tension. Is that 577.37? And then internal loads T, V, M, MTV. You can remember it that way. But if you can't remember what those three things are, you got big problems. <laughs> That's only three things to memorize. And then Newton's second law says uh, 1,000 zero plus zero negative 577.37. P negative V. When you were uh, when you were asking me that, I, I was uh, daydreaming about my next conversation with Tony. <laughs> um. <laughs> Just keep, keep it going. Look worse every day. It was so dark out there. Um. 
E is equal to negative 1,000. So that didn't change. And then V is equal to negative 577. So it's still in compression, but now there's also a shear force. And uh, moment equation says negative 250 plus m, that's an m, uh, minus vx is equal to 0. So m is equal to 250 minus 577.37x. Yes, I skipped that. I'm sorry. I blame Tony. Uh, I skipped this. So, uh, yes, exactly. Uh, so there's a moment from the 577. It has a moment arm of 1. Force is 577.37. And uh, our about point is the left. So this would make frozen clockwise. So that's negative. Well, when I think about it this way, if you think about it this way, the numbers are just think of an absolute value and then think about the direction to the side. Yeah, so it's a length of one to here, a magnitude of 577, and then 577 acting down would rotate it. So equals zero. So M is equal to uh, what's that? What do you get if you add those two together? Seven, eight. Uh, yes, eight twenty-seven point three seven uh, plus VX. So minus five seventy-seven point three seven. And if you plot these functions, so uh, these are the functions that tell you what's going on for x between 0 and 1. And these are the functions that tell you what's going on from x between 1 and 1.433. So the tension, that's not very interesting. Uh, that just has a value of negative 1,000 the whole way. The shear force is 0 for the first half. And then for the second half, negative 577. And then the bending moment is uh, uh, is that the first one? So M is two fifty. For the first half. And then uh, over the second half, it's got to just be this. He's at the meetup. And I know that it has to be zero over here because of that endpoint check. You know, um, if you don't have a point moment at the end, you can't have. And have a bending moment at the end. Okay, so where are we um, most concerned about uh, about the horizontal piece breaking? Uh, tension doesn't ever change. 
Air force, there's no shear force on this half, but over here it's constant. And the bending moment is constant until you get to the midpoint and then slowly decreases. So we'd be most concerned about it breaking just to the right of the midpoint. It's not a midpoint, actually. Yeah, just to the right of where the cable's at. That's a one. Yeah, and I did it at the, I drew it like it's the midpoint when it's really like three quarters or something, but. Okay, but now we have to do the one with the rotation matrix. Yep. Instead of rotating the body. Well, in all my classes, I always rotate the coordinate system because that is a confusing thing. And some people do rotate the body and the matrix looks slightly different. But in every one of my classes, it's the coordinate system. Yeah. Okay, so this, uh, what does it look like? We have the cable force of 577.37. And then we have uh, F12. So here we have negative F12, which is 1000, negative 577.37. And then the 1,000 Newton force this way. And we want to go from a coordinate system like this to a coordinate system like this. Um, so the rotation matrix is... Oh, how do you have to rotate that? Yeah, so theta is equal to positive 30. And so the Q matrix is cosine of 30, sine of 30, negative sine of 30, cosine of 30, or 0.866. 0.5, negative 0 0.5, 0 0.866. And we're just one by one going to multiply these forces. And what you don't want to do is think that what we're trying to do is bring this down. That will give you the wrong answer. You want to rotate the coordinate system and then turn your head a little in your mind. You know. Okay, so uh, Q times, we're just going to go through these forces one by one. In the original coordinate system, this one is 0, 577. So we're going to multiply Q times 0, 577.37. Can someone tell me what that is? Okay. 500. Okay. And then we're going to multiply Q times this vector. Yeah. Um, and what was that? Positive 1,000, negative 577.37. right? Hmm. Very interesting. And then uh, the last one is Q times that external 1,000 Newton. So that's negative 1,000, 0.
And so now, after we turn our head slightly, we have this coordinate system this way. Um, here, a force vector of 288.69, 500. Uh, in the middle, a force vector of 577.37, negative 1,000. And at the oh, okay. <laughs> it makes sense to identify different kinds of on my chart here, like uh, 1, 000, uh, 1, 5, 4, 8, 8, 1, 5, 5, and then basically 0, 0. Mm. Well, this one uh, at least looks like it satisfies Newton's second law. So that's a. Yeah, I did that. Mm. I'm going to go with this one. I think this looks good. Right. What does? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's go with this. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, uh, there are three places where the subfunctions can change. You know, now, since we do that coordinate system transformation, now it's, uh, it's just an easy internal loads problem, no distributed loads or anything. Um, N equals three, that means we're going to do two cuts. Uh, so, cut one is valid for x's between 0 and 0.5. We have a force vector of 288.69, positive 500. And then the internal loads. So Newton's second law says 288.69, 500, plus P negative V, is equal to zeros. And so T is equal to negative 288.69, and V is equal to 500. And then the moment equation, uh, the about point is at the left. So the force at the left doesn't do anything. So we just have m minus vx equals 0. And so m is equal to 500x. And then cut two. It's valid from 0.5 to 1. And this time we include that second force. So we still have the one at the left. Uh, then we have the one at the middle. Five seventy seven point three seven negative one thousand, and then the internal loads T V M. So Newton's second law says two eight eight point 
six nine five hundred plus five seven seven point three seven negative one thousand plus T negative V is equal to zeros. So that says T is equal to, uh, is that like 866 or something? What do you get when you add those two together? It's something negative. Yes, you're doing that thing that uh, people do regularly, and I constantly tell you not to do it. And that is that um, x refers to the right end. Okay, x tells you where to end at the right, but the, the cut always starts at the extreme left. So this x doesn't have anything to do with this. X just said the, the length of the thing is x, you know, and x. So this is x equals zero. This is x. And for this free body diagram to be valid, uh, x over here has to fall between these ranges. But we're always starting our isolated body all the way at the left. The left has no relation to this. Only the right is related to that. We're isolating a piece that goes from all the way at the left to x. You know, it goes from all the way at the left to some random point. And so we're calling that distance x. And that x, in order for this free body diagram to make sense, can fall between these values. But it can't be outside those values. It's a, it's a, it's confusing for everybody. Except me. Yeah. So the force with with the and it keeps acting on the object, but I'm splitting the x y between the group of y and one, right? But the force is the left on the far left. So keep acting on the yeah, we keep isolating the whole thing because the math is easier yeah. that way, and we can isolate anything we want. We make our break on the right at x because we're trying to calculate these values at yeah. x. You know, but yes. between 0.5 and 1, like uh -huh. left and right end, there wouldn't be anything. Yeah, free body that's right. It's, well, there would be, the right side would be and you right. could, you actually could do it, but it would be super complicated because what you would have is like this. You'd have a piece here. You'd have these things you're trying to calculate. And you'd have these other internal loads that, you'd have to know in order to get values. You know what I mean? And, and you could do it that way because you've already calculated the internal loads from the first cut. But it's just, that would be a major pain for no reason. So instead, we, since there's no reason for us to calculate these internal loads anymore, we've already done these. We go all the way to the, we go all the way to the left, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. It, all we're trying to do, so just remember, like, all we're trying to do is calculate these internal loads at, at x, at this, at this location, you know? And so, as far as a body to isolate, we're just trying to isolate whatever body we can come up with that makes doing that calculation. And the easiest way to do it is to go all the way to the left, where all we have here are the external loads. And the only internal loads we have to calculate are on the right end, somewhere between those. But I think I think we've already gone past the point where talking about more isn't helping, you know? Just eventually, like, <laughs> eventually it'll make sense, you know? And it'll make sense and then stop making sense and then make sense. and But eventually it'll make sense and keep making sense.
Did you add those? Could you add those? Uh, 866. Okay. So T is negative 866. Uh, v, oh, I can do this one, is negative 500. And uh, then moment equation. There's no moment produced by these forces. There's one produced by that 1,000 down. It has a moment arm of 0.5. I'm sort of racing through this just so we can get done in time. The magnitude of the force is 1,000. Would a force of 1,000 act clockwise? So that's negative. Negative 500. Then we have plus m minus vx is equal to zero. So m is equal to 500 uh, plus vx, so minus 500x. Okay, so let's graph these out and see where we're nervous about this member. Uh, the tension is negative 288 and then negative 866. So something like that. The shear force. is positive 500 and then negative 500. And the bending moment five hundred X for the first half. 500 minus 500x for the second half. So there. And so we're most concerned about this uh, somewhere just to the right of the, you know, close to the center, to the right of the center. That is the midpoint on this one, yeah. That's where the um, where the two members touch each other. Any questions about that one? Okay. Could you scroll up a little bit? Yeah. Let me just pass. 